Professional commercial photographer Kenny Lowe decided to pack his equipment, travel through the country, aiming his camera on the people of his beloved nation. Three years later, born in Malaysia, a photographer's journey was born. His aim, to try and capture the essence of the people from different walks of life in their natural surroundings. He shot over 300 subjects and 100 made it into the book. The ones who didn't make it will be featured on his website. Well, Born in Malaysia is a book about um, Malaysians, uh, the not so ordinary Malaysians and uh, unsung heroes. Um, for this project, I traveled for about three years throughout Malaysia, um, to East Malaysia, to Perlis, to, to in fact to every single state. And uh, the result is a book that really I hope will depict Malaysians of all cultures and races and uh, religions. Um, Though the book is really about Malaysians as, as such, it's not really uh, about um, whether we are Malay or Chinese or what. I hope that um, the book will help us realize that we should be celebrating the diverse cultures, races and religions in, in Malaysia. Instead of being afraid of it, we should celebrate it because um, I think any true Malaysian would want to maintain this harmony. and I. I just hope that this book will play a little part in, in achieving that. Kenny recently launched his book. Amongst those he invited were also subjects of his camera. We had expected a huge coffee table type book and were surprised at the format he had chosen. You know, if it's a coffee table book, it's going to be hard cover. Um, first things, this sort of books really as, as it is. Coffee table book means it belongs to the coffee table or belongs on the shelf. I wanted the book to be accessible, it's small, it's uh, unpretentious, it's something that you can just dump into your backpack or your handbag and carry it around. And it doesn't matter if it gets stained with Teh Tarik or, or, or Roti Chana or whatever, because this book is meant to be read, it's meant to be shown to your friends. And that's why I kept it small. And by keeping it small, I hopefully could well keep the cost down and the price down too. You know, when I think about the, the past three years and all the subjects I've, I've, I've met and photographed and interviewed, you know, every person, every single one stands up. One of the stories that really interests me was uh, actually these two uh, Indian ladies. They have a Teh Tarik store and then a Makan store in Tanjung Bunga in Penang. And they're side by side. These two ladies both lost their husbands at a young age. And at that time, their stores were right beside each other. And from that time until now, they've been like sisters. There's this guy, uh, this Muhammad Rudin in Kota Baru. Uh, he runs this uh, Teh Tarik uh, coffee, little coffee place in Kota Baru. And he is like the star of the show because everyone sits around him, Chinese, Malay, Indians, everyone is sitting around him. And then uh, when it's time for your Teh Tarik, he'll say, oh, bang, uh, berapa kali nak tarik? Uh, in English, I actually says, how many times do you want me to pull it? Then uh, when I was there, I just said, oh, five times. Then as he was pulling it five times, everyone started counting. Satu, dua, tiga. And these are the sort of things that are so Malaysian. And then here we are, all, all races just enjoying uh, Te Tarek. And uh, oh, he's the star of the show, you can see. Um, it's interesting how he yeah. Yeah. Actually, that that thing happened because uh, the place is actually called uh, Kedai Kopi Din Tokyo. Uh, many years ago, there used to be a, a hotel frequented by the Japanese. A lot of Japanese used to come to Kota Baru and stay in that hotel. It's not a hotel anymore. So from that time, it was named that. And apparently, in the Japan, whether it's true. There's a lot of these U-shaped uh, tables, you know. I, I have uh, my Japanese friend Kayo there off camera, and I'm asking her, is it true? Kayo, is it true? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, then, uh, then there was this Indian chap uh, who runs uh, this record store in Penang, in Lobo Hatton. When I went in there, he looked at me. I was like, yeah. I'm coming into a record store. He said, hello, you know, I'm selling Hindi albums here, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I said, yeah, I don't mind. I, I want to buy an Indian album. And he was like, incredulous. 
I said, look, you're a record store. If I ask you who is Lady Gaga, you wouldn't know, right? And then he said, who is Lady Gaga? But at the end of the day, I remembered um, this uh, movie from many years ago called uh, Hati Miri Sati. And I mentioned that he was, he started smiling and laughing and then we started having a conversation and, and there it was. Um, then there are those people who are, for instance, uh, Chan Kin Wah, he, he runs a, a watch repair shop in, in Malacca. And uh, he's always, every time I see him, he says, why can't we treat old buildings the way he treats old watches, which is just repair and restore it rather than painting it over with some weird color, you know? So every person in this book has a story. Even the, the Oran Asli kids with their aspirations, um, they just want to find, uh, get a good education so they can move ahead in life. Tell us a little bit about the cover. Why did you choose that cover? They chose me instead of I chose them. So this one uh, was in uh, Teluk Badera in uh, Dragano. So I was at this fishing village walking around trying to shoot uh, some villagers, you know, uh, the, the fishermen. And these kid, three kids were just following me behind, just hounding me and always asking me, oh, Abang, ambil gamba, you know, Abang, oh, take my picture. And I was like, I said, okay, I'm going to turn around in five seconds. And when, I'm, when I turn around, you better be ready. And when I turn around, this was what I got. I did not pose them. This is all natural. They just, just happen to be like this. And these are some of the lucky things that happens in uh, photography. In terms of equipment, Kenny made it simple. Most of the time, he shot with a mirrorless camera, a camera that's not as bulky as those that professionals lug, and he has a bit of advice for photography students. Just one thing, don't buy too many cameras and don't buy too many lenses because you really don't need so much equipment. You need to have that just that one camera, maybe two lenses, and just know every single thing about that camera and, uh, and study uh, your subjects more. Your subjects are more important than the camera because I see a lot of the uh, aspiring photographers, they get too involved in the camera. They, they spend time uh, adjusting this and that. You know, while you're doing that, your subject has already gone away. So uh, just concentrate more on photography and less on camera equipment. Ah, yes, yes. This one will be fun because uh, I've decided that I want to give a book to every single subject that I photograph in here, uh, which will easily take another couple of months. But uh, it's going to be very fun this time because I have uh, some of the subjects in KL uh, and some of the people who have bought the book, they want to follow me. So I think it will be a convoy of maybe a few cars driving to Ipoh, to Penang, to Perlis. And then we will meet all the subjects and we'll pass them a book and then we'll, I think it will be fun.